So today I'm sitting with uh, Jeff Peters and Jeff Peters Jr. from Grove City, Ohio, and they've brought their uh, zip that they've just completed or not quite completed. Not quite completed, <laughs> but almost. And uh, tell us what made you want to build a, your own boat. Well, we have a, we have a 1966 Century Resorter that needed some repair and that my son and I and daughter granddaughter, uh, stripped the inside of it out, turned it over, and, re and restored the bottom of the boat. When we got that all back together, my son Jeffrey says, we ought to start buying boats and fixing them up and flipping them. And I thought, I don't think I want to do that. So he said something about, how, well, how about if we build one? So I thought that seemed more like a more appropriate idea. So. In 2009, my wife asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I had done some research on boats, and I said, I gave her the website and the, the uh, description of the plans for the zip boat, and said I'd like to have these for Christmas. Well, she took that to mean that apparently she wanted, I wanted just to look at it. So, opened them up for Christmas Day. That night we went to my daughter's house for Christmas dinner, spread the plans out on the island. My son and I looked at them, and Sunday, the next day, which was Sunday, everything was back open. We went to Home Depot and bought material to transfer all the frame parts onto and started. Uh, this was in December 2009, right? Yep. And uh, we somewhat it's pretty much completed uh, for the gathering this year in 2013. We have a uh, 1961 Mercury 45 horsepower outboard motor that I bought with a donor boat. Uh, so a donor boat I got the trailer, the motor, steering, and uh, uh, power, control. power trim controls and so forth from it, and then uh, I was going to scrap it, just take it to the junkyard, and I found out that it was a classic, so there was a guy that wanted it, and he paid me $65 to haul it to him, and so I made $65 off of that whole deal. <laughs> well, you're one of the few people, I think, that has experience building a boat from scratch from plans and also restoring right. a boat. Right. Tell us about that process, and which did you think was more difficult? Well. The restoring of the of the mahogany boat was a little different in, in as much as I took a perfectly good boat, stripped everything out of the inside of it, turned it over, and then started on a bottom that I didn't have any idea what exactly what I was doing. Uh, other than we took we took hundreds and hundreds of photos and did a lot of um, uh, document documentation of what we took apart and as we took the found that the frames were some of those were bad while we had it apart we wanted to replace all the frames that were questionable the keel needed some work done to it so everything was removed one piece at a time remade and then reinstalled at that particular point in time so that we didn't miss out on or didn't miss it a step there and put something back together that wanted to correct. Uh, we ended up with a what we call a 5200 bottom, which is a uh, bottom that you put a, a four millimeter marine plywood on first and you cement that to the frames and staple it down with um, uh, staples and you use uh, 3M 5200. Mm -hmm. uh, then we, of course, we had we had taken all the planks off and saved all those and used those for patterns cut the new planks and then we had to fit all those and that then gets all you put 5200 all over the bottom of the boat and then you screw put those down and screw in place and then it's got a and that's all done for you to go through the sanding process a bit. That took probably about 18 months and finally towards the end of that I said you know I need to Good horse around with this. I got a lot of money invested in it. I had to bought the boat. Uh, I had a garage built. Put the boat in to work on it and spent 
probably as much money on material as I had on the boat to fix the bottom. And uh, so we got it finished in 18 months. Turned it back over, put everything back in it, everything worked fine. And uh, so that was, that gave us a little bit of effort or a little bit of background into building the boat. But our biggest advantage, I think, that we probably have over a lot of people is that he and I own our own business. And we worked uh, uh, 24 years. 24 years together building custom furniture. So now, Jeff, tell us, uh, what do you guys think about the gathering so far? It's Friday morning. We're just kind of really getting started. Um, but what is it? Uh, well, it, it, uh, I, we like the uh, like the location. Uh, I think the floating cabins are really cool. Um, from that standpoint, uh, looks like the weather's going to be really good today. Yeah. Uh, questionable for the tonight and tomorrow, but uh, so far we've uh, it was it was worth the two-day drive it took for us to get here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love seeing the, the different boats and the, how everybody interpreted the plans differently than, than what we did. I, I would say that uh, the difference between restoration and, and rebuild or new build, uh, restoration, you at least have a point of reference. So you've got the frame there. You know what you've got to, how, how it looked or how it's supposed to look. With the new build, we had no idea what it's supposed to look like. We had, we had pictures. But how to get to there was was difficult because of 25 years of cabin experience, boxes, square boxes, you could have easy, easily imagine that. But then when you convert to uh, building a boat where the, the the quality standard is pleasing to the eye, that's just it was a difficult transition for us, for me to make anyway. Right, me too. From that square line, square box type of deal to uh, all the compound lines in the, in the boats. What what would you say that was the uh, the most and least challenging of, of the build? Well, I thought the most challenging was when we got to the bow uh, on the bottom, where the where the bending that plywood, bending the plywood, and making the transition from lap to butt joint. Uh, we we stood there a long time and scratched our heads, and then finally he says, "Let's just do it." Mm -hmm. And some way or another, he pushed and prodded and cut and everything else until we got it one side to fit. And then we went over on the other side and, and looked at it again for some period of time until we, <laughs> it just happened, you know. Uh, what I thought was interesting with the build is that you, with the chine and the shear, you start out with a pretty good sized piece of wood for both of them. And by the time you get to shaping it, it's about half as big as it was to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, I was amazed at how that still had a lot of rigidity there to it uh, from that standpoint. And I think the, the other thing with the boat building is that you build the thing upside down. And then all of a sudden you turn it over and you're amazed at how big it actually is. You know, with it upside down, the bottom is not very big. Yeah. Uh, the sides are not very long. And you don't realize that you went from, from four foot to almost six foot in beam width mm -hmm. until you turn it over and then of course when you turn them over then you're pretty much at your own uh, you get to your own design as far as the top of it is concerned yeah and for me i think the, the the most difficult part was again like he was saying get the frame all put together everything square all the boards are square something we can comprehend and you've got to start saying it all and fairing it all and that was that was a tough thing to do to, to <coughs> The <laughs> Visualize the alley. We actually took a belt sander to it, and like, like he said, I just started on it in on it one day and just started sanding and sanding and sanding until finally we it kind of got a feel for how it was supposed to work. And then uh, from there, get a little bit of the vision, and then you can uh, uh, get to where you need to be for the putting the plywood on the bottom. What was the most uh, enjoyable or, or simple task? I don't think there were any simple tasks. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most enjoyable thing for me was watching pictures that. Uh, he was sending me toward the end, okay, we added this little feature, this little bit. So it was fun for me to sit in Grove City while he's in Seneca Lake, uh, adding the final touches on it. So that was very easy for me. You know, it's... Well, I, I think the most enjoyable thing was when we finally got the deck and everything on. Uh, our deck is, is not cemented down. It's all screwed in from underneath of the deck. Thanks to him being. I noticed there. you have no no screw no screw holes, screw holes or bungs or anything. No screw holes or bungs or anything. Um, from that standpoint, and the uh, 
covering boards on the sides, those are glued down, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, those are glued down, and we, where we needed to, there's no screws in those either except out where we could get to them, and up towards the uh, shear, then those are pin nailed down with a very fine pin nailer, which is something that we knew about from our woodworking experience. And uh, so that worked out well there. Uh, I think the most exciting part part of the whole thing was when it really started to change, it really started to look like a boat and when it started to put stain on it. And it's, uh, there again, that's something he missed uh, only from pictures he was able to see that and of course his response was, wow, they're awesome, you know, and, and uh, uh, every time I sent him a picture, till the end, when I sent him one in the parking lot of the, of the boat with the cover on it was not thrilled with getting a picture of it with the cover over so he couldn't see the end results. Yeah. I told him he'd have to wait till we got here to see the end of it. Well, we appreciate you bringing it down here and having a talk with us. Yeah. We look forward to getting some on the water yeah. shots of it yeah. later. Yeah. We'd like to be able to get all of them together out there and get a picture of all the zips that are here. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you guys you. very much. Thank you.